You're watching the Motorola Moto E40 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Now before we can completely lift up and remove the back housing, we need to apply some heat around the fingerprint reader since it's held on with adhesive and we're going to separate the fingerprint reader from the back housing. The back housing is made of plastic. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. On the inside of the back housing, there are numerous antenna flex cables around the edges, and there's some graphene film on top and bottom. The graphene film helps transfer heat. There are 21 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. On the back of this plastic cover, there's this flex cable over here, which connects the speaker to the motherboard. So the speaker contacts touch the top gold contacts and the pins on the motherboard touch the bottom contacts. And this is the LED flashboard. Before we continue, we need to disconnect the battery cable. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. There's a coaxial cable on the bottom right of the board that needs to be disconnected by just popping it off. There's also a copper tape covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect it. There's a single Phillips screw located on the top left of the board which needs to be removed. Once that screw is removed, there's a catch over here on the frame holding the board down, which we need to bypass in order to lift up and remove the main board. On the main board, the depth camera is located on top, followed by the 48 megapixel main camera, and below that is the macro vision camera. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The headphone jack is located on top and there's a rubber gasket around it. And there's a liquid damage indicator which is that white sticker next to it. There's also copper tape on top of the shields. Here's a look with the copper tape peeled back. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back of the board. The proximity sensor is located on top. And the main camera flex cable is located on the back as well. There's also a graphite pad on the back shield. Once the back shield is removed, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM, as well as this chip over here in the corner. Now the bottom plastic cover can be removed. The flex cable over here connects the speaker to the subboard. On this bottom subboard, there's a flex cable we need to disconnect, as well as the other end of the coaxial cable. Now we can lift up and remove the subboard. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port and another liquid damage indicator, which is the Y sticker over here. The primary microphone is located underneath the shield. And here's a look at the other side. In order to remove the battery, there are no provided pull tabs to help us pry it off. So we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed through this opening in the mid frame. And this flex cable is also connected to this flex cable over here, which connects the sub board to the main board. So if you need to replace your screen, you would have to remove the back cover, as well as the screws on the top and bottom plastic cover and remove those. You disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, remove the battery, and disconnect the flex cable over here on the bottom, 
Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive, and reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable through the opening over here in the mid frame, as well as the one over here, and reassemble your phone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom right corner, and the speaker is located on the bottom left corner, and they're both held down with some adhesive. So if you wanted to replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. This is the flex cable for the side keys, and if you need to replace that, you can just peel it off. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, and that's also held down with some adhesive. There's also one more liquid damage indicator, which is this white sticker, located underneath the SIM tray. As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 7 out of 10. The back cover is pretty easy to remove, and the fact that there's no adhesive holding it down is a plus. However, the adhesive on the battery is extremely strong, and it's difficult to pry the battery off, and there are no pull tabs provided to help you do the job. So you are going to need some isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm going to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, reapply the back housing. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.